Good afternoon all. And continue to pray for me and I don't know what that was but I know who does know and he did help me with that and also he told me where it came from it came from me <laughs> and that's kind of a jab at me but it could have been a lot more than that and in his grace he told me what it was and it will go away eventually and I will thank him for that early and that's all I can tell you right now but in all of that our well just get started John the fourth chapter the first verse John the fourth chapter the first verse therefore when Yahweh Elohim knew how the Pharisees had heard that Yeshua made and baptized more disciples than John though Yeshua himself did not baptize but his disciples did so he left Judea and went away again into Galilee and it was necessary for him to go through Samaria then he came to a city of Samaria called Sakar near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph and Jacob's well was there Yeshua therefore being wearied with his journey sat thus upon the well he found there It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Yeshua said to her, Give me to drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How do you, being a Jew, ask of, of me a drink who am a woman of Samaria for the Jews do not associate with Samaritans note though this was not a written rule but the Jewish rabbis put this rule in place and the people honored it not because of the strength of the rule because of their fear of the Pharisees we'll find this a lot in the New Testament <laughs> and you still reading it and I would advise you that you do you'll find it in the Old Testament also the Pharisees were a piece of work and that's that's the mildest way I can say it they were a piece of work verse 10 Yeshua answered and said to her if you knew the gift of Yahweh Elohim 
and who it is that says to you, give me to drink, you would have asked of him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have no vessel and the well is deep. Reminds me of an old joke from years ago. Some of you have heard it. In association with a well, anyway. That's a deep subject. <laughs> You've heard that. From where then do you have this living water? Verse 12. Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his children and his cattle? Yeshua answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. And whoever drinks of the water that I shall give, he shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. What's that again? Everlasting life? You can't even wrap your mind around that, can you? That is the problem with so many of us and so many out there that we have never seen, that we can't wrap our minds around that concept in any real way. Most of the songs that we sing, the end of life according to those songs is our death. That concept of everlasting life is just foreign to us because the body itself is made to only last for so long. And we don't wrap our mind around anything but that. But if you really think about it, you've got to get past that. Verse 15, the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not thirst, nor, note this, come here to draw. <laughs> that was our little note that she had a little bit of difficulty because of her background every time she came to this place to draw water. The other people in the town, anybody that lives in a small town or ever has lived in a small town knows what I'm talking about. Everybody knows everything about you. And they don't talk about you about it, but they talk about each other about it. <laughs> And every time she came there to that water to wit to draw from that well all around her. And it was becoming a difficulty for her to draw. The difficulty wasn't in the drawing itself, but all of that hoo hawing that everybody else did about her not to her but in her hearing it came and it became very difficult to her to draw this water verse 16 Yeshua said to her go call your husband and come here now it gets deep 
Verse 17. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Yeshua said to her, you have said well, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands. And he whom you have now is not your husband. in that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are our prophet. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where I, we, where men ought to worship. Yeshua said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you shall neither worship the Father in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. A lot of people still misunderstand that statement. The salvation is of the Jews, but they have kind of lost their way themselves. And the world doesn't know that themselves. We, 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 we will soon learn that in a most profound way, but most, most of us don't know yet. Verse 23, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. Yahweh is a spirit, and they who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Verse 25, the woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he has come, he will tell us all things. Verse 27, 26. Yeshua said to her, I am the one speaking to you. And upon this, his disciples came and marveled that he talked with a woman. However, no one said so. What do you seek? Or why do you talk with her? The woman then left her water pot and went into the city and said to the men, Come, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Is that one not the Christ? And they went out of the city and came to him. And in the meantime, his disciples were asking him, saying, Master, eat. But he said to them, I have food to which, which you do not know. Therefore, the disciples said to one another, no one brought him anything to eat. Yeshua said to them, my food, get this, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. If I forgot, the title is 
when our worship is real. When our worship is real. And there is a difference. Some people move in here every once in a while. You see them. Is saying as soon as the amen is struck, they're gone. Others come just about the time the food shows up. That's not real. And I don't want to call anybody out because that's my, not my job here. But you see for yourself who that is. Others do other things that get them out of church time. I don't say anything about them either because there's a time when they're going to knock on that back door and it won't be there. When our worship is real, those people won't be there because theirs isn't. I don't so say who is what because that's not my job here to say who is what. The most realistic thing in a believer's world at this stage of life should be the quality of their worship. Not the kind of music they play. Some, that's all they here for. But eventually they disappear. Because the music wasn't, wasn't right. But that is varied as we are but it will not get us into the kingdom of Elohim, whatever kind of music it is. By the way, what kind of music will be played in our heavenly worship? Hadn't thought of that, had you? It wasn't important to you in context, was it? If it was, Think a little bit deeper. I hadn't either. And I'm a musician. Well, I was anyway. But more important things came into my life. but I was so busy trying to get there, the kingdom, that I didn't much think about the music. It was kind of like the Samaritan woman at the well. If this is the Christ or the Messiah, I'm going to get to as many of my friends as I can to meet him and do whatever we have to do to get into his eternal kingdom. I think sometimes our thoughts are so bound up in the cultural things that Hasatan has funneled into our heads on this earth that we don't think much of the things that might keep us from getting there. Had you. And a lot of people will think of it, but too late. Now is the time to think about it. Now. 
we don't think of these scriptures when we think of ourselves first. We're too busy thinking about what we want instead of what he wants. Continuing in John, the third chapter, the 27th verse. John, the third chapter, the 27th verse. And John answered and said, a man can receive nothing unless he is given it from heaven. You yourselves bear witness to me that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I, that I am sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the, bri the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice then my joy is fulfilled. Note verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. That's hard. All of those who I mentioned earlier, it's harder for them. when he must decrease somehow. He must increase, but they must decrease. That's hard. Anybody, for anybody, that's hard. But it might be a little bit deeper for you individually if you know what's coming and what you have to do to get to what's coming. And the fact that what's coming is forever and the stuff in front of us is here but a little while, that might do things a little bit different for you. Might be. Might be a little bit different for you. Continuing on. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, the 25th verse. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, the 25th verse. Because the foolish things of Yahweh Elohim are wiser than men. And the weak things of Yahweh Elohim are stronger than men. For you see your calling, brothers. That not many wise men, according to the flesh, are called. Not many mighty, not many noble. But Yahweh Elohim has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And Yahweh Elohim has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And Yahweh Elohim has chosen the base things of the world and things which are despised and things which are not in order to bring to nothing things that are. So that no flesh 
should glory in his presence. But of him, you are in Yeshua Messiah, who of Yahweh Elohim is made to us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption so that according to it as it all is written he who glories let him glory in Yahweh Elohim not himself as so many do Continuing on, John, the fourth chapter, the 34th verse. Yahweh, Yeshua, said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say, it is yet four months and the harvest comes? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white to harvest already. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit to life eternal. so that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. And in this is the saying true, one sows and another reaps. So I sent you to reap that on which you bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and you have entered into their labor. And many of the Samaritans of the city believed on him because of the saying of the woman who testified. He told me all that I ever did. Though as the Samaritans had come to him, they begged him that he would stay with them. And he stayed there two days. Not much, huh? But how much did he bestow on them in the two days in considering who he was and what he knew? I would love to spend it about two hours with him. With my memory intact. <coughs> sense of smell intact. All of that intact. And many more believe because of his own word. And they said to the woman, now we believe, not because of your saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is truly the Christ, the savior of the world. And after two days, he departed from there and went to, into Galilee. The true worship and belief comes from your own study and proof from your study. Not mama's study, not daddy's study, not your brother's study, or your sister's study. My Bible doesn't have anything else. If you believe based on someone else's faith or words of faith, 
your faith will eventually fail because their faith will not come on to you like the waters of Yeshua and continually come to you. At some point, if you don't continually study and move more information into your belief system that is there eventually will fail because their faith will not come on to you like the waters of I said of Yeshua. If you don't continually read this word and strengthen this word in your mind somewhere down the line you will start to lose it and now all of a sudden that stuff that you see on the television is stronger in your mind than the stuff in this book that's a bad place to be any questions Any scriptures or comments? John. Yeah, you, you touched on, you said your own, basically said your own study is important. Mm -hmm. Not the information you give me or, mm -hmm. made me think of, what did they have to do if you became a king of Israel? <laughs> did you have to write the law yep. in its entirety? Yep. In your own hand, I believe. Yep. You, didn't, you didn't dictate it. Yep. You wrote it out in your own hand. Mm -hmm. So if you have any memory at all, any situations that come into your, not all of it's going to pop in your head, perhaps, if you're a human, but I'm sure certain things had to be impressed in their minds because they wrote up, and they've got a copy of it in their own hand, mm -hmm. and they know where they can find it. So I think that really impressed, if they did it right, it really impressed these things in their mind, their own studying of this, or their own you know, writing it down. At some point, all of us have at some point come into the presence of preachers or ministers or teachers that said to you write this stuff down a lot of the older guys that came out with this years ago and you watched it like I did and got out of there and these same people, big guys, big churches, all of a sudden, when they went wrong, they didn't say that stuff anymore. And it was no great thing, to me anyway, to see these churches of six million people tumble down to 200 or 100 sometimes and less than even we've got here at some times because of that little slip they did what slip you talking about all of a sudden the book was closed up here and they started talking off the top of their head all of a sudden and people started believing the stuff off the top of their heads and not even believing the book for themselves because nobody was reading it when we took the ambassador college correspondence course if mm -hmm. you remember the back that part we had to write out a lot of scriptures and we did remember a lot of scriptures mm -hmm. That's one way to remember them, mm -hmm. writing it out. Ruby. That, that's what, what I'm doing to help me because I'm dyslexic pretty bad. And I have to const I have to learn things by visual, but when it comes to reading and memorizing, it's horrifying. And I have to write and write, write, and I sometimes think it, I didn't realize that I write. But going back to what Brother John was saying about how you do have to write, you think of how the scriptures tell you that these were learned people. Mm -hmm. 
They were educated. They knew it. But yet he came across the Samaritan woman that didn't believe. She even said, you, a Jew, asking me for a drink? But yet she believed because, because she understood after confess, confessing it to her, saying, where's your husband? Bring, tell your husband. She says, I don't have a husband. And, she, and he said, you're correct. You had five husbands, but when you have, it is not your husband. But the fact that she thought, like Sister Sherry and I were saying, like, she said, he knows me. He knew my every detail of my life. He has to be the Messiah. And these are people that are the same people didn't believe. It had to take somebody that was totally opposite, that they were not even speak or look upon Samaritan people, was able to say, wow, you got to be it. I, you, you have to be it because you know everything. And she ran and she told everybody, come and see the man that knows who I am, who knows every part of me. I think that's fantastic to, to, to teach us, hey, not because you're so learned, you know it all. You could just read and read, but it just go over you. Mm -hmm. You have to understand, you have to have a heart, you have to have a love for Yeshua to say, Father, help me. How many times in your life have you run up on someone that after talking to them about 15 minutes or 20 minutes or something, you feel it in the heart that that person knows you? How many times in your life have you felt that? Not many. Yes. by themselves they always went with someone and she was by herself and whenever they would go to the well they always had other women with them and they would all walk together so it just shows that she she was probably ostracized by the village by everyone because of her past having as he said the man that you're living with now is not your husband but he used her and we always think that someone has to be picture perfect for the father to use them but and then she was able to go and tell these men who she had ran into you know, i ran into this man that told me everything about myself and then they had to go see for themselves but still they could have not listened to her and say oh she's just out of her mind you know she's this but they went and checked it out for themselves so he used her to even get through to the men and back then men were women were not looked upon to be much anyway and 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 some of the churches they still are not but that's a whole nother story but uh I just think that it is an amazing story how the father used her. Yes. Thinking about Thermal. the woman at the well, uh, a couple verses came to my mind from uh, Matthew 21, uh, verse 31 and 32. And this was um, part of the parable of the two sons, but I just read 31 and 32. And Messiah yes was saying, uh, which of the two did the will of his father? They said to him, the first, yes was said to them, Assuredly I say to you that tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom of God before you. <laughs> but John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But tax collectors and harlots believed him. And when you saw it, you did not afterward relent and believe him. So you, you see sometimes, like we were reading in 1 Corinthians, uh, what was that, uh, uh, 
um, chapter 1, uh, verse 26, and you know that you were reading that yep. sometimes the base people, people consider the base people, the low down people, mm -hmm. the Father calls and uses them, you know, yes. and then to eventually put the same as those that think they're so mighty, you know, and all, and got so much prestige. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ruby. Uh, Sister Sandy said that when she when she made mention, she was used. Mm -hmm. Now, if we think about it, all the women that did the same thing as she did, how many people probably got saved because this woman believed and she shared? How many of the women must have ran and said, I want to know what he can do for me? Mm -hmm. My goodness, how powerful. And like Brother Thurman said, he picks people, unique people, not perfect picture people. That's why the church is made at, is a hospital, it's made of so many ill people, physically, emotionally, spiritually, broken, shattered. He works with those who allow themselves to be worked on, to try to get that healing. Yes. Develop. It, it, I don't want to say that. I think we read that today. He doesn't choose the people with PhDs and PhDs and all that sometimes. Right. He right. mm -hmm. takes the humble people, the janitors, the people that sweep the street to get a massive suit. You don't have to be, uh, what am I trying to say? You don't have to be up there. Uh, like yes, yes, yes. You can be just a humble servant, which I am. I'm just a servant to do what I, what he tells me to do. And I hope I keep being a servant to do what yes, he has yes. planned for me to do. If, if you... I'm sorry. No, do it. If everybody does their part and whatever gift he has given you, to use it to serve him, to serve him. Because he said, if you truly believe, he, you have a gift. Uh, that's what I was in uh, First Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 26 to 31. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome, the thing is, we're all servants. We're all servants. I'm just up here. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, I'm out there. <laughs> and whatever position you have, you're a servant. You're a servant. And some don't think so after a while because as several, well, especially if they get a little bit of this world's stuff mm -hmm. <coughs> and the stuff is going to burn up one day if you think it's not keep living and those who have a lot of stuff in that stuff <laughs> that's the kindest way to put it, put it their stuff of their life is in that stuff that's on that pyre that's something else again to watch your life burn before your eyes and all of a sudden if you don't think so if that doesn't put you on the same level as a servant nothing will Thurman I was always thinking they said that not even uh, Messiah Yeshua he didn't even come to be served but you know he, he came to serve and give his life and ransom for many you know? mm -hmm. two scriptures together. but he didn't come to, you know, to be served you know? but he, you know, he served and carried out the will of the Father mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what you're here for. Dwayne. Um, this shows a confusing light, for me anyway, mm -hmm. on the divorce and remarriage problem. Are we to assume that these five chapters she'd been married to all died? 
<laughs> no, that you tracking up somewhere at some point. Yeah. At some point, and everybody knew it. That's why they stayed a wide path away from her, but they still talked. Yeah. Anyone else? Sherry. That's another thing I saw. I see a lot now. No one all anymore wants to talk about the same thing. Everybody wants something that is higher than everybody else's stuff. And you come to them with it. All of a sudden, he talking different stuff than everybody else. I'm going to him. Yeah. And he goes off the rails. You go with him. And then something else happens. And I didn't think that was going to happen. How did you think something else would happen if all these 6,000 years or so, everybody's coming from the same book? And all of a sudden, this person has a different book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's own Bible. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so different. And when you think about it for yourself, because you're thinking you got an edge because this person knows more. Mm -hmm. And I'm with them, I know more too. And you know more, you do more. But you aren't more. You're the same. But you don't think so at the time because you're talking some stuff that you got some, somebody else. And it puts you on a higher pedestal on your own mind. But if that thing tumbles, who tumbles with it? Not everybody else, but you. Sure. Seeking other things, and I, I went to Revelation, uh, the end of the chapter, where it says, "For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, and if anyone adds to these things, mm -hmm. now I will add to them the plagues mm -hmm. that are written in this book." So, as you were saying, you you, you hear it mm -hmm. and you believe it, but you want to wander off to another place and said, oh, that sounds good. But it, it says right here, a warning. 
Mm -hmm. who are testifying to anyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, and if anyone adds to these things, Yahweh will add to them, add to them the plagues that are written in this book. So you, you, you don't have the right to tamper with this book and, and put things in there what are that the, are not there. What are the plagues of this book? Flames. Flames. And I said earlier, your whole life is in that flame. You don't believe that, though, until you see the burning. Now it's too late. It's too late now to do any, to anything about it. And there's nothing else I can say at that point because it's out of my hands at that point. It's out of your hands at that point. But you put it there because you believed something that wasn't in the book. Thurman. Same thing. Same thing. Anyone else? When our worship is real. <laughs>